I'm from the Safer Communities Unit, um, and our area focuses on crime prevention across the organisation. We don't directly deal with the councils, but we provide advice to our local area commanders in how to um, help you guys with your grants and the process as well. What we aim to do, as I mentioned, is elevate focus on crime prevention as well as victim support because we think that's a key component of crime prevention as well. Um, it's important that the applications for grants are supported by evidence to demonstrate the crime prevention issues or problems you're trying to address. We think we have a key part in helping you come up with some evidence and we're, we're identifying in our organisation too that we're relying more on evidence um, to be able to come up with some initiatives in terms of some of our crime prevention initiatives that we're doing across the organisation. Um, in the past, it was identified that the quality of um, supportive evidence from local councils and police varied greatly. So we're trying to improve that by providing that support to our local area commanders and in turn, hopefully, that will provide you guys with greater support as well. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about how to obtain evidence from Victoria Police and how to make the best use of it in achieving better crime prevention outcomes for your grant projects. I'll talk about the role of Victoria Police. So um, current guidelines state that all the applications for CCTV projects must have a letter of support from Victoria Police. You can get this letter of support from your local area commander, so it has to be from an inspector or above. So it's making contact with your local police, finding out who your local area commander is and then working with them and the police, whoever, whoever is um, required to be engaged, working with them to be able to come up with this letter of support. I'll talk to you about what must be included in the letter of support as well. The guidelines also suggest that information should be sought for additional grants as well. Can I highly recommend that you speak to your local police? And, and I'm guessing from even just the previous example that you do speak to your local police, but we can help you identify some other things that might not be a consideration when you're first coming, coming to put these grants in. The CC letter of um, support, if you wish to submit a grant application for CCTV, contact your local police station to engage to the local area commander, which is your inspector. Um, they're, able, they're the only ones who are able to provide this letter of support or anyone above. Um, and if you believe a CCTV is justified based on the type and nature of offences at the proposed sites, taking into consideration any alternative crime prevention approaches as well, in considering CCTV, um, our evidence, or we've collected some evidence to suggest that it's not always the most effective on its own. Um, it's really looking at it in a holistic, at a holistic approach or taking a holistic approach towards it. So not just looking at, um, oh, if we put CCTV, it's going to be an effective crime prevention um, approach. It's, it's all the other logistics as well. So ensuring that um, we're in a position to be able to support the CCTV. Um, if you have your own local monitoring, that you know, we're, I'd, I'd hate to think that you're going to fail because we're not in a position to be able to provide that support that you might need. Councils must note also that the use of the CCTV uh, footage for monitoring and evidentiary purposes must meet technical and logistical standards as well. So the Victoria Police te technical guidelines for CCTV can be obtained from Victoria Police website. We've partnered successfully with a number of councils in the past um, to facilitate CCTV arrangements and with significant outcomes for the communities as well. We did find in the past that CCTV is best targeted at mo motor vehicle related crime in car parking facilities and only when used in conjunction with other strategies as well. Uh, your local area commander can provide you with information on the type and nature of crime in the proposed target areas. Unfortunately, we're, not, we're unable to provide you with unpublished crime stats, and I think the CSA are here today so they can give you some more information about obtaining some unpublished crime stats. We have crime mapping and intelligence analyst capabilities, and subject to our resource availability and priorities, we can identify the high, high crime locations, types and nature of crimes, trends, any patterns of crime, impact of crime at these locations for police and the community, and assisting with the identification of potential causes and treatments for the crime. So we can work in conjunction with you guys to be able to identify potential treatments that we might be able to test.
In saying that, when we identify potential treatments, um, ideally it'd be good to um, look at other jurisdictions and other councils and see what has been successful in those areas and potentially translating those into your grant applications too. The scientific literature shows that the most effective crime prevention strategies are those where police and local governments work together to undertake the enforcement activities in conjunction with public safety and security infrastructure enhancements at high crime locations, commonly known as crime hotspots. The grants provide an opportunity for local councils to partner with us to develop projects that are more likely to have a significant and sustained impact on reducing crime. We can assist with identifying your crime hotspots in your local areas. And as part of our commitment to community safety, each police di division, we nominate high-risk community locations. These locations are based on crime data, calls for service, community concerns, local police knowledge and the impact of crime and public order issues within that location for community safety and for police. We can undertake some crime mapping to identify hotspots by specific crime types as well within the high-risk community locations. We do a site assessment and we can assist in pinpointing the causes and drivers of the chosen crime problem to inform the development of an evidence-based treatment. You can contact your local area commanders at your local police stations and in collaboration with the police, you can identify crime issues within, within your high-risk community locations that will benefit from a combination of police enforcement efforts and infrastructure enhancements. Additional stakeholders may be identified at this stage, so your local traders could be a consideration, schools, other government agencies. Community consultation may also be required, and that was evidence with the presentation that, that was before me. In negotiation with police and other stakeholders, you can identify the most appropriate evidence-based treatments to apply the crime problems. Now, we've developed some projects internally where we've not only relied on other jurisdictions, we've also looked at international research. Now, we're not 100% convinced that stuff that's working overseas will ne necessarily translate here, um, but we're testing those theories, and I see this as an opportunity for you guys to be able to test some theories as well. All stakeholders can also agree on the division of responsibility for the entire project, so that would be part of the consultation process as well. As an example, Victoria Police may un agree to undertake targeted patrols during the project period or undertake an enforcement, enhanced enforcement operation. Local traders may agree, agree to clean shop fronts and or install security measures. Local councils may agree to wreck lighting, enhance the amenity of local areas. So it's really just identify who will be responsible for what and making sure that we all work in partnership and also commit to what we, uh, we're willing to undertake as well. Overall, just doing some research, identifying effective treatment for similar crime problems in other jurisdictions and areas, and then also perhaps looking at what we've done in the past and whether that's been effective in the past as well. Victoria Police can support applications as well for your grants by providing a letter from the local um, area commander and to su supplement other evidence obtained by local councils as well. We've also got CPOs and, as mentioned, SEPTED audits. We're able to facilitate those as well, so um, it might be a consideration as part of your grant application too. I, I touched before on how we're unable to provide unpublished crime stats, but there are some published crime stats that you can rely on and you can also apply to have some for unpublished crime stats too. In terms of our letter of support, some of the things that we can include is the narrative of the location, extent of the identified crime problem, including patterns, crime patterns and trends. We can also provide a description of the impact of the crime problem on the community and on the police as well. So it's more about the qualitative data that we can provide for your application as well. We can also include an assessment of any current interventions that have been inadequate, in, ineffective or absent, and then propose a treatment as well. A description of the proposed treatment will benefit the community and the police as well. So Victoria Police's understanding of the agreement between stakeholders and the respective areas of responsibility for the project, including a commitment from police on the activities they will undertake and how those activities will enhance the effectiveness of the infrastructure project. Some of the benefits of this partnership approach is that we recognise that it's no longer the sole responsibility of police. Everyone has a responsibility for crime prevention. 
Local governments are well placed to assist police to prevent crime and the public infrastructure fund grants provide opportunities for the community to achieve real and long lasting reductions in crime. Victoria Police strongly encourages local councils to partner with police to target police and non-police resources to areas where the community is most likely to see and experience an impact on crime and safety. It's mandatory that you come and receive or obtain a letter of support for CCTV, but might I suggest that or strongly urge you to work with your local police regardless of what the application is so we can provide you with any additional information and perhaps even strengthen your application too. Some of the crime data sources, so some of it's, uh, it's published on the Crime Statistics website. It's also on the Victoria Police website, but um, I'd probably suggest going to the Crime Statistics website. It's a lot more comprehensive than ours and up to date. Um, and Crime Statistics Agency can also provide a customised report on requests too. We encourage local governments to partner with police to develop collaborative responses to address crime in hotspots. I'd just like to probably reinforce the fact that it's probably important that you rely on evidence, look at what's happened in the past, look at other areas, perhaps rely on international research as well, and then also speak to your local police to be able to provide you with that qualitative data to enable you to um, put together a, a decent application so hopefully you get up and you, you have a successful grant. And then even with the evaluation process, um, can I just touch on you know, once you get to that point, it's also a good idea to work with police in terms of the additional qualitative data they can give after or during the process um, as your project unfolds.